In this short video, we're going to look at our aggregate demand and aggregate supply model and look at macroeconomic equilibrium. Specifically, we're going to distinguish between the long run and the short run for equilibrium. And for sh short run equilibrium, we're going to look at what characterizes it. And then finally, for short run equilibrium that has a gap, how does the economy self-correct to a long run equilibrium? Let's start by distinguishing between the short run and the long run. So in the short run, some input prices are fixed, and the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. With input prices fixed because of contracts, formal or informal arrangements, what happens is the price rises, costs don't rise by as much, and producers have a higher profit margin. They're willing to supply more, and so the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. In the long run, however, that's going to change. All prices and wages are flexible. So a higher price of final output doesn't mean a higher profit margin. And so the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at potential output. And just a reminder, when I talk about potential output, we're talking about full employment output. Or in other words, the level of real GDP that corresponds to full employment. Full employment being zero cyclical unemployment. Let's start with a long run equilibrium. In the long run equilibrium, we're going to have an intersection of aggregate demand with the two kinds of aggregate supply curves. Aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, all intersect at potential output. Long run equilibrium would be characterized by full employment. So the unemployment rate will be at about the natural rate of unemployment. So full employment reminder means that cyclical unemployment would be zero. And there would be a long run eco macroeconomic equilibrium. All three curves intersect here at potential output. And a short run equilibrium may not look like that. Short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect in a short run equilibrium. However, this can occur at the real GDP of full employment or below or above it. So short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect in a short run equilibrium, but not necessarily intersecting with the long run aggregate supply curve at the same point. So not all short run equilibrium are long run equilibrium. And if we're at a short run equilibrium that's not the same as that long run equilibrium, there are forces in the economy that will move us to that full employment output. So let's start with um, a short run equilibrium that creates what we call an expansionary or an inflationary gap. So this equilibrium is defined as one where the real GDP from the intersection of the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve is above potential output. So short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect, but they do it at a point that's beyond the long run aggregate supply curve. And this would be characterized by a very low unemployment rate, almost too low in terms of firms finding workers, and really upward pressure on prices. Um, the prices of materials and inputs, as well as the price of final goods and services. What does it look like? Well, here's our two aggregate supply curves. In this type of short run equilibrium of an expansionary or inflationary gap, aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply are going to intersect at some point beyond potential output. So in other words, potential output isn't maximum output in the economy. We can't exceed it, at least temporarily. But when we do, it puts a lot of pressure on prices. So it's not necessarily a desirable point. So there's our inflationary or expansionary gap. Now in the long run, what forces could move us in order to correct this gap? Well, in the long run, if we're at an inflationary gap, in the long run, production costs will start to rise. There's this upward pressure on prices. There's a shortage of labor. That'll push the wage up. There would be a shortage of other materials. Energy prices would go up. Contracts are renegotiated. So costs start to rise. And when those costs start to rise, that higher production cost shifts the supply curve to the left. So our short run aggregate supply curve is going to shift left as we strain capacity and push production costs higher. And so if the short run aggregate supply curve shifts left, how much will it shift left? Well, this process would happen until 
short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand all intersect. In other words, until we reach a long run equilibrium. So let's go back to our inflationary gap. So here's where we are. And what we expect is the upward pressure on prices of materials and labor is going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the left. So we shift in that direction to the left and then you have a new equilibrium and that new equilibrium is the long run equilibrium. A higher price level and a lower output but a sustainable long run equilibrium at potential output. Let's look at a gap from the other side now. So this, from this side we refer to it as a recessionary gap or contractionary gap. So this is, again is a short run equilibrium but it's where real GDP is below potential output. So the short run aggregate supply curve is going to intersect the aggregate demand curve at a point below the long run aggregate supply curve. And this is going to be characterized by cyclical unemployment. Uh, low or negative GDP growth is going to characterize a recessionary gap. So we have our aggregate supply curves, long and short run. And in the recessionary gap, the aggregate demand curve is going to intersect at some point to the left of potential output. So here's where I've drawn it, and that gives us this as a recessionary gap, or also referred to as a contractionary gap. So unemployment would be too high, well above the natural rate, and an undesirable macroeconomic equilibrium. So what happens in the long run? Well, again, in the long run, there are forces that can push us back to potential output and a long run equilibrium. In this case here, we have a lot of excess capacity. Unemployment is too high. Uh, there's just not enough demand for goods and services. So production costs start to fall. Again, contracts are renegotiated. Wages might fall. And so lower production costs would shift the short run average supply curve to the right. And this would happen until we have an intersection of all three curves in this model again. In other words, until we reach the long run equilibrium. So self-correction from a recessionary gap is going to look something like this. So there's, we are, there's our recessionary gap. And falling production costs cause short run average supply to shift to the right. And we have a new equilibrium that's at a long run point. So going from short, short run to long run, in this, in this model, there's market forces that can close either type of gap. If real GDP is too low, forces shift our short run aggregate supply curve to the right. And if real GDP is high, forces shift that same curve to the left over time. Sounds great, right? The economy is self-correcting, so we shouldn't have to do anything about business cycles in this model. Looks a little simple, doesn't it? Well, there's some key assumptions here. First of all, we had our short run average supply curve shift in those two examples. We didn't talk about how long it takes to shift. And if it takes a long time, in the meantime, people in the economy are suffering. So that's not really a good thing. Furthermore, the self correction only works if prices and wages are flexible. So flexible price and wage assumption is essential here because that's what it takes for short run average supply curve to shift and to adjust back to potential output. In other words, wages and prices need to rise and fall easily. And if they don't do that easily or quickly, self-correction could not happen, get stuck, or take a really long time. And in reality, if we think about the economy, wages in particular can be sticky. Uh, so wages may not rise as quickly during a recession, but they aren't necessarily cut or they don't necessarily free fall. Um, so, so that's because of formal and, and informal relation, relationships in terms of, of contracts and, and the law. So self-correction in real, real life might take too long, and that's why you have to think about other methods for the government to try and close these gaps more quickly through monetary or physical policy, which will be the subject of our next short video.